Thank you so much. Is this thing on? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, I'm so excited to be here. This is my first time at uh, Decon, and I'm super stoked. I can't, I just got here, so as soon as we're done, I get to go walk the floor, and I'm going to do my lap. I'm going to buy some stuff. I'm really excited. <laughs>Right. My, my answer to this is a little bit contradictory. Like, on the one hand, you're right. The cycle is so fast. Like, we talk I, about I this a lot in terms of, of marketing. One of the things like that's interesting about a room like Decon and what you'll enjoy olden days, is I there are people here that are taking ago. a crack at like making in those olden new characters, days, new stories, we would talk building about new worlds. Like long lead but you're so right. And how you and don't try I'd love to get your opinion on this. It almost seems like, like a year in advance since the internet explosion, we've gone back and honored stories that were told before the internet explosion. Back when you could get everybody's attention. Do you think that we're at a moment now where I know that you guys do still do original stories? But is it but so much harder because side, the world's moving so much faster to like get that moment where you can get people's attention again on a new project? They watched a lot of stuff and they watched a lot of storytelling and serialized storytelling and like they got really engaged in long form stories. And so like both those things are true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
and the like the Marvel right. thing, it's that's what it's all about. Is those are on a huge scale, that's serialized storytelling that they're doing over like a decade, right? Well, they're doing this 19 episodes Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and so for us, yeah, it's, it's actually hard. It's really hard to get all that character storytelling. And yes. A, and animated movies yes. tend to be shorter. So it is, it is hard. I so mean, it's we interesting because when you watch thinking about the you know, next streaming TV movie, the next and you spend to tell the story, several the hours with these characters, the and then you go watch a movie that's 90 minutes, that like, follows, how's she already pregnant? They just met each other saga. yesterday. You know, mm -hmm. and the story moves so fast, and then... In series, you can take your time and sculpt out all those peaks and valleys of storytelling. Yes. Whether you're getting it 90 minutes at a time or 10 episodes at 45 minutes you know, at a time. You know, again, our, so many things at our studio in terms of like our mission statement have well, not so many things. Some things have changed over the years. But something that hasn't changed is we've always said we kind of want to be 50-50, original and IP. We're, we're mostly sticking to it. I think that the, when you said, like, you guys are deciding right. to... So to when you're looking at everything think, laid out like in front of you and you're making decisions because there's only like so much money the, and so the, much time boss, to... You, know, you want to make them all, but you got to pick and choose. Movies, like, is he more How much do you prioritize something that, something that does have that IP growth where you can see it going into when consumer go goods, series, maybe a, a secondary series, theme park licensing? Do you really prioritize something that you feel has those amount of legs? Everybody knows that if a brand already exists you're going to have an easier time with the ancillary stuff, right? The, the theme parks, the, the consumer products. But then to say the obvious thing, if you never do anything original, you'll never start a new piece of IP. <laughs> so you have to do both. Right, right. Yeah. It, it, so some things are the same. And as you that's, said, that's kind of the problem, right? Started in live action. Well, it's even interesting um, because, you know, we're talking about, you know, one of the biggest studios studio in the entertainment deck, industry in the um, world. But and in these one-man shops behind us, which can also a be a woman, uh, a you will see people no will what, make a rip-off of you know, Mickey Mouse or Spider-Man because it's a proven taste, win but, like, that gets people's attention, and, and then they're trying to slide the original in. So, you know, we're all playing this game, whether it's millions of dollars or thousands of dollars that are on the line. I would love to know, though, when you were in live action and you learned how to manage those projects, how different was it? I mean, I think your first big one was how to train your dragon like when you walk company, into that world it was super fun we were making yeah, how movies, different is animated in life it was great um but i was getting increasingly interested in animation because i'd had kids i had never grown up watching animation like most people grew up watching looney tunes and all this stuff i had like a hippie mom i didn't have a tv i didn't get to see much stuff no sorry hold on Divorce. Dad here in LA, being a mm -hmm. classic LA sitcom writer and everything that you think that might imagine in the okay. 70s. Um, and then my mom is like bailed on all that, took baby me. She's Swedish by birth and was like, we're out of here. And we just started this kind of nomadic hippie existence that lasted for about 10 years. Sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah. And not even America, which it sounds snobby, but like I have to say, like it was really helpful growing up and not only understanding this country, but understanding like what people in other places think. But anyway, so start having. Hold on. Your kids, family was doing TV scripts. Started watching Miyazaki movies oh. and was like, oh my God. 
what the fuck is this? It's so beautiful. It's so extraordinary. Okay, and okay. Also, I was very confused. Pixar was just starting to fire off, and you're like, what's that about? Why are those movies so good? They're so much better than all the other live-action movies. So I got interested, and right around that time, a good friend of mine was at DreamWorks Animation. So you had one foot in said, Hollywood hey, and one foot in somebody, the real world. Uh, to yeah. run development, you want to come over here? And uh, I, I went and started talking to them and um, realized, man, oh, man, I really want to do this. And, and then I, I went there, and I, I ran development for a few years, sure. and then I transitioned into producing. Here's the thing that I love about animation that is really different from live action. Live action, <laughs> you work really hard on the script. There's a whole now world out there. Script. But guess what? You get on <laughs> set and stuff's different. The environments are different. The actors interpret things a different way. And that's great. I mean, right. that's part of movie making. But what would invariably happen, at least yeah. to me, is we'd be at the end of the day and we'd be like, we're wrapping and we're going to the next location. And I'd be like, no, 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 no. We're not done. We need to stay here another day. We didn't get it. We didn't get exactly what we wanted. But on live action shoots, you just gotta, you just gotta move on. You'll make it work in the edit room. In animation, it's a lot like workshopping a play. Not like I haven't done that, but yeah. I know what that's like. In animation, you get to we do a script, but we don't sweat the script as much because we know what happens after we get a script that essentially represents the movie is we're going to storyboard the whole thing, we're going to put temporary voices to it, music, we're going to cut it together, and then we get to look at it. Right, right. And we get to look at our movie, and which is such a gift, and be like, oh, wow, like, act two is awesome, and it ends strong, but fucking act one is a disaster. We need to fix that, and that those two sequences in act two aren't as good as the rest. And then you get to go in and fix it, and then you get to look at it again, and if you have a nice schedule... You get to do that like you know three or four times before you feed production, and it's the best. And that's why those Pixar movies are like, or or yeah. any good animated movie is like a polished gem. Right. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> right. And actually, it's interesting. I talk about this all the time, how I love the iterative thing. Right. Because you talk can go in there and just keep and massaging it. I, I was watching uh, the first season right. of White Lotus on HBO. And I told textures, my wife, I'm like, this show's insane because it's shot in Hawaii. And, the lighting, and so many of the like, scenes so great are at sunset. To know that there's a later you only get when we can an hour and a half to shoot really that. I mean, I know you can chase the sun with some of the lenses. But tomorrow's sunset in Hawaii is not going to look like the day before. So I'm sitting there thinking about the production going, oh my God, they're out on the water in the boat. They've got 45 minutes to get all this dialogue in. But if we were animating that, we could get that dialogue perfect. We could sure, get our camera true. shots. We send it over to somebody else that does our lighting. We can get it glossy. And even still, if we need to add more moment because we've invented that time, we can go back inside of that time. Right. So when you decided to take on Into the Spider-Verse, Sony had already had tremendous success with Spider-Man. I believe it's like seven of the top 15 movies that Sony's produced. So when you touch that, are, are, I mean, I know it's kind of almost, it's a little bit of an easy win because yeah, I mean, we know there's was, an audience, we know scary. that people are into it. But it you guys was. did something so <laughs> drastically different that we'd never seen before. You right. know, it was the first feature Marvel animated film. 
you guys really were ahead of the step right. of inclusion and diversity and telling the story from so many and, different perspectives and letting and other now, people see when themselves I look at, like, the climax which of the movie, now the I'm movie like, seems like it makes sense like, kind of a radical thought before so the Thanos snap in 2020 so art, when you were like, looking at that it, the movie how is confident so were you that like, this was going to be a movie the win that it was I mean, everybody wants mm-hmm. to win an Oscar you pick everything hoping that it could but I mean you don't know that until years and years later, but what was your, what was what were you looking at in there that gave you the confidence? So, Let's bet so look, big on this a couple because there was some is, safety I would say to it. That it was I also think kind one of, of the nice things about factors. IP is I think it lets you be a little bit more bold. It kind of <laughs> gives you. I mean, a it's easy to look at that now and like, go, look, "Of course, did it work?" Yeah, but we've already got that some buy-in. We've when already you got guys first did that, like for us. what so, like, five years before and, we saw and it. I sincerely it was believe, pretty like, radical at that moment. As we what, talk anybody at our studio what? about like being bold, it's not because like oh we're so cool and we're so bold. It is good business, <laughs> genuinely. I mean yes, it is because we want to be bold and we want to surprise ourselves and everything. We don't want to be bored by what yeah. we're doing, but. Yeah, well, I mean, in the textures honestly, and the, the way that the like, scenes the audience, go together, it's new, so I mean, it's, it, it's wants a moving art project the entire time. Um, and it's mainstream as it, hell, which is it insane. Was scary Those two normally don't live in the same universe. We were pushing so far beyond the normal look of an animated movie. And also, not just the look, like it had dramatic intensity that's unusual I get that. for an, a main Because you've already got the audience on your side. Movie. Like, you know, Miles watches his uncle die from a gunshot in an alley. Like, that's not the normal stuff of an animated film. No. Oh, oh, but although, that's actually a good point. Dumbo's mom, like, that's equally intense, right? Like, um, so, so good on you for citing that. But, so it was scary in a bunch of different ways, but we had a ton of support from my boss and from the studio, which was amazing. And a lot of it had to do with our producers, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, because these guys are consummate, proven filmmakers, and as producers, they just kept the movie so close and and shepherded us through everything, and I think people felt like, if Chris and Phil are here, it's gonna be okay. Right, right. Yeah, it's not like Dumbo's mom dipping out, like it's it's full on murder. It's such a, kind of cheeseball generic answer but it is true it is vision yeah. it is some you know <laughs> i say this thing about chris and phil which is that um they ta- it goes back to the fear thing if you're not if you're not a little bit scared every day by what you're doing then like maybe you should stay home because yeah. like what's the point like if you're not going to push and try these guys are so relentless and they are so driven. I um, actually forgot what the point of the question was, but they just taught me like. But as the, as the big again, boss woman on be, that project, be right? Like in you the sign off, of we're doing it. And, what and do you look it's for? Actually that funny gives with them. You that instinct have to, like, that it's going to be successful. Like how they will have you learned to recognize that? Like they will want to keep making it better until they die. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's right. And actually, yeah. now I remember the question. And what I was going to say is what we look for in filmmakers are people where I'm like, oh, this person is, is going to be telling me what to do. I'm not, I'm not going to be telling them what to do. They're going to fucking tell me. And that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah. That's all of us. We're never done. But see, the way that I reverse engineer that advice is this. You believed in the movie because they believed in it. And so for every creative here, when you're trying to sell somebody on your vision, you can't come in and be soft. you got to tell me this is the best fucking thing you're going to do, and I will kill myself making it great for you. Yes, and I have always maintained, and back when I was at DreamWorks, <laughs> I used to say this to, to um, my boss, and he, I, I don't that. think he agreed with me, but I so would always say, like, with, I don't think the so brand is DreamWorks. Animation. I think You're in the a, brand is a unique Panda. spot, and I want I to know how, how you, train your dragon. do you enjoy this um, freedom? 
You're not making Pixar content Disney, that goes downline to a that's streaming different. service, they have right? Achieved, like sometimes they hit cinema. I know you guys have done that, a deal with been Netflix. Years in I know you've cre- I mean, created dump, content like, for Amazon. Like it's, so much like when you watch some of your favorite sitcoms and you make it to the end, you're like, and you can say, oh, Warner oh, Brothers I makes this, or Sony makes this. The latest so because Pixar you don't have like a Disney direct location for things, does that kind of give you freedom to make lots of different projects because you know you've got lots of different partners that are excited to buy? Say like products. I want to go see you know that new you know we're making a cr- really cool movie about K-pop like I want everyone to be like I want to go see that crazy animated K-pop movie, so the whole thing if you don't believe that we need to have a house style which we don't we're like we're like anti house style we, it's a huge point of pride for us that. If you look at this like but little it's timeline built thing, for like that, right? If it didn't say Sony Animation, you'd be like, this didn't come from the same place. Yeah, there's nothing that ties it all together except we got excited about these things. No, because they look at it as the IP that drives them there. Oh, it's just, yes, indeed. Mm. <laughs> he he is so handsome, and when you have the amazing character designer Rob Valley like, put his what, spin on what Elvis, ties all it these is together. very sexy. And see, what I hear from that is you guys have a lot of freedom that you get to reinvent yourself for the project. Whereas, think about all the things that are probably a good idea at Disney or Pixar, and I'm a huge fan. But it has to click all the way down line. If it doesn't make sense as merchandise on Main Street USA, it's, it's not going to go the whole way. Whereas I know you guys are doing your first R-rated series for Netflix. I kept hearing them talk about it in meetings for Decon. They kept saying, King, King, King. I never realized it was my king, Elvis Aaron Presley. Ooh, I am fired up. Look at that man. He's so handsome. He looks like Batman Beyond. Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to say what makes it extra hard is you're not just looking right, he's for a good looking man. So to what some of these cool people want to know and people that will listen to this and watch it at home you are also is so many people that like are illustrators and animators, you know, obviously story. they would so love to get on your radar. Say we're looking for and as I've interviewed to lots of people that are in your position or parallel positions, I keep hearing, like, I really we're looking want to for tell world builders. We want people that can build a world or a character that belongs inside of a universe that we can buy into and believe. When people are trying to attempt that because it's like universally such great advice but so broad like oh just make something everybody would love kind of no problem let me make right? mickey mouse um, done so and you so know when I you're always looking say, like, all when you're walking around and you're looking at all, new artists or new people that are so creative are just about you what know, do you think makes love, that um, world or that character and feeling, intoxicating to somebody um, like yourself but at the same time yeah it's got to have like the bells and whistles and you want to transport people to some place that they've never been now that could be like with the Mitchells versus the Machines, so much of that movie, eventually we went to like a, a big old, you know, set PC kind of environment in the end, but the first two acts of that movie were set in like real America, mm. and we really wanted to show the realness of things. We talked a lot bizarrely about the Roseanne show and how that show, and All in the Family, how those shoes kind of uniquely showed like yeah, how people yeah. actually lived and how whitewashed animated movies in particular, just how animated movies have whitewashed, like, it, you, you think everybody was, like, white and lived in, a, like, a comfortable suburban existence, and you yeah. never show anything else, so my point about all that being is, it doesn't necessarily have to be a world, like, in outer space or a fantasy world, it can be like, hey, I want to show our world, I want to show, yeah. you know, people who go to Walmart and buy the extra large, you know, paper towel roll and have to keep it in the corner of their bedroom because they don't have a pantry to keep it in. Like, I want to show that and I want to do it with this kind of detail. That actually is bringing people somewhere they haven't been before, believe it or not. Mm.
Yeah. I, I, I absolutely, absolutely believe that. Mitchell's is a great example of that. That was a really personal story to Mike Rianda. You know, twice and the now fact I've kind of hit you so up much with the him, advice. You know, making movies is you know, how hard. How do people break in? Animated and movies take forever. You keep giving it to me in a way we, I haven't we heard joke about before, the fact where that it like sounds like you really we have believe to in the like four, artist. It's like and their vision. Sprinting. And, you know, I, I've for like been given this years. advice when I try to, you know, do um, these so, like, interviews and, and passion, empower the audience. Like that but I'm really passion, enjoying just, how much you say that it's going to be personal it, it just to them. Drives you to because do I think better a lot of times, and, and try harder, you know, we're trained as artists, like, well, just do the best work possible, a, a movie and that, that will do everything was so for you. Great was but I'm loving your version of it, also putting you in there. Like, tell your own story of love and heartache. And if you tell it so authentically you, it will resonate with other people. One hundred percent, and I love. So when you, you guys are doing the deal about, with Netflix, in terms of the and you're doing the King, and it's a series, <laughs> are you you're enjoying um, looking at in terms the, the whiteboard? Like, but because okay, so I like to be honest, and this is it's hard, how we're going. Like, like I, I what you're that describing that process is of, like we don't have to get it perfect and in ninety minutes. You have the time we have to sit and look several back episodes, and get it just several right. hours to tell well, the story. Series is Do you so enjoy fast finding the it's, rhythm? That's the thing I find. I find it very exciting. You come out swinging. You do your hit as number two. Number three, you bring it down. You got to figure it out right now. It's got to be good so they flip the record over. You know, there's a way that albums are laid out. You know, normally on TV shows, that second to last one is the one that punches you in the gut. Because the next one is the setup for season number two. So are you enjoying that roller coaster of storytelling? Episode seven turns out maybe isn't one of our best episodes. I think the thing that was the biggest thing I had to learn at oh, all my friends great who worked in TV were like, look me in the eye and understand <laughs> this or you will die trying to make series. They're not all the Emmy award winning episode. Some are going to be great. Some are going to be okay. And you just have to accept that. So I'm working on it. Oh, it's gritty, right? I, I think the fun thing about series, though, and, you know, we've talked a lot about 70s sitcoms and stuff, and I was raised on those as well. Uh, I always thought that a really good show was one where you thought about those characters in between episodes. Because, you know, we had to wait a week. And I kept wondering, like, what do Willis and Arnold do when I don't see them being mean I to think, Kimberly yeah, on Tuesday or Thursday really night, well whenever taken. different what strokes aired. And you know, it's like wondering about back then there was such less media. You and I right now, we could draw the, the layout to the right, Three's Company apartment, you know? And there's the one you. door you never go think, into. Um, so when you're and, and, you working know, on projects, do you guys think series, about like, movies, like what, I love that what we else make, can I mean, we plant I love in this our stuff. story so fun, but, that, but that we the, don't tell the them, like the paper space, towels like, in the corner? The fact that, like, like, I hate TV shows so where everybody has enough space for everything. And, 
Because I've lived in like five houses now. To be those and eventually you get to the moment, like, I don't know where this shit goes. Like, We're going to start throwing stuff away. Years but on TV, it's like, oh, like that our bedroom so alone is 800 to me. square feet. Trick to so do you love like focusing in on those details that make you think about them as if they're real and what we don't get to see? You don't live in a spacious thing. Like we're all struggling. But then also the aspirational part, because you also want to see your heroes not just have all the same issues yeah. you do, but you want to see them kind of push through and 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 and, and do those kind of t do inspirational things. The mom in the Mitchells is just a very regular mom. She doesn't look. She looks like a real person. Mm -hmm. She's not glamorous. She's super envious. Mm -hmm. We learn about all the neighbors who are so much, like, she's got these neighbors that are way better than her. And, and we worked really hard to make her just a really regular person. But there is a moment in the movie where she loses it, and she's been pushed to her limit, and she goes, like, commando ninja crazy. And, it's, and she's, like, so yeah. powerful, and she yeah. takes down basically a robot army, and you're like, yes, Linda, go! Kill those robots. And sort of that's my point, is I think it's got to... Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and, and like, mm -hmm. take the time to let the audience build a connection to that character and go, oh, I get that. Like, moms watching that movie ideally are going, like, that's kind of me. And then when she does that thing, you're like, oh, now I wish that was me. And I'm going to aspire to be more like that. <laughs> and, and that moment works though, right? Because of how you pulled back, knowing that that's the moment when she goes, I think the term is full-on mama bear. Right. And, and so if she was always turned to 11, you can't go, like Spinal Tip said, you can't go louder. You know, so like keeping her toned down, it gives you the ability to bump, yeah. bump it up. Yeah, you're right. The transformation of I identify with this character, and now when she's in one of the worst positions of her life, I hope that I would still be like her in this moment. That I, I love that. So I was in the same room when Disney was here with D23, okay? And they had all these Imagineers standing around the new stuff they're doing at the park. And I said, oh, this is great, talking to this woman. She goes, you know... I, I'm the project I mean, manager. If I start crying kind of right now, is that going to be inappropriate? She was the project manager, um, not like one of the artists. <laughs> and I looked at her and no, I go, hey, he honestly, I'm from dude, the creative world. Hard, Don't you it's not, ever apologize for being the, a project the, manager? The because us real artists, is, we wouldn't get hard. any fucking thing done also, without you we, people doing saying, so much more this is the deadline, we were doing this is the budget. We keep and saying I kind of gave her a pep talk. We should get I don't know if she's humor, about she's stuff because like, we keep adding to our I really appreciate that. I'm like, you're standing here with pride. So for you, you know, and then You're sometimes we have this joke where like, and we should care projects. less, which is a joke because we are completely incapable to of really caring manage. less. You've got but, the um, creative team here, but, uh, but you've got money yeah, people here, you've got the exhausting. timeline I people. Love like what you're you conducting said, though, this orchestra and so many of the pieces sometimes the play well together, artists, but sometimes they don't. I, like, I love our that's got to be the grind of the job, right? It's getting all... little community where. You already asked me if I'm a hugger, so you know you can get a free hug. Us and them, between the artists and the people who manage the artists. And I've been in a culture where, this is a little different than the point you were making, but where the, the production people would sort of treat the artists like really talented children. And I hated that. I was like, why don't we treat the artists like right. really talented adults and see what happens? Maybe they'll act like adults. And lo and behold, <laughs> they, they did. And, and, and I think by sort of saying like, we're all adults here and we all want the same thing and we all respect each other. And there's no greater value to what an artist does than to what the person who, like if you didn't have the person helping get that vision on screen, it wouldn't get on screen. So like at the end of the day, we all have an equally important job to do. And I think as much as we can bring everybody together, it makes for a healthier and yeah. more fun environment. So every job
Mm. Ah. Right. I'm. Well, <laughs> Maybe they'll act what, like adults. What it hasn't done, and sometimes I think something must be wrong with me, is so many of my filmmaker friends, when they watch stuff, they're just looking at shots and doing stuff like that's not. That's not me. I still come to it every time like, oh, I just, you know, I have nothing to do with this industry. I just watch it for what it is. Um, so every job kind of has like a thing that it makes you hate, right? You get too far in the music industry yeah, and you start to hate Yeah, and I music. don't know why that is. You get too far in this industry like and start to hate And in some ways it is a good thing because I can just fully immerse myself and what enjoy the viewing experience. What does that make experience. you enjoy but less? Like, what has this job thing, ruined like, specifically, for you? Because I like to read And I love books, that laugh, by the way. There's a couple times in the last few years where I read a book and put it down and was like, that was such a great book. And then like a year later, somebody optioned it for a movie and I was like, Oh my God, I didn't even put like my work hat on. Like, why didn't I think about the fact that this would also have been a good movie? I just went like, what an amazing book. It. And, and then threw it away and never thought about it again. So that's not good. Um, I mean, what do, I'm trying to think, what do I like less? Um, so you can still go to the film, I don't even know, man. go I'll, see a movie, this or watch it at home, VOD. We all got to figure out how to have less meetings. You that's, don't give a shit, but, you can just watch less it. Less meetings. Oh. We have so many meetings, it's crazy. It's awful. We're actually we're actually doing this kind of kooky thing at work where we're going to because we 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 exist in these kind of traditional buildings, hallways, doors, people in offices behind closed doors, and we're we're trying this new communal space. It's it's going to be all kinds of chaos and inadvertent comedy, <laughs> but we're going to try to bring a lot of us together so that we spend a lot of our day in a communal space. So instead of having to schedule a meeting for every conversation. We can just be like, hey, dude, we bumped into each other here at the fucking coffee cart. Like, let's talk about that thing now. Super old school. Well, I don't even know. It's like old school, but it's also apparently progressive, this flexible communal workspace. I, I have spent so many hours talking about what? this thing. It's very top oh. of mind, but I'm excited about what, what dude, it's going to bring. Your and calendar hopefully is maybe a, a few nightmare. Fewer meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, talk more. I hate it when women are quiet. <laughs> yeah, like just talk more. Um, and don't let guys talk over you. And if they do, point out to them that they're doing it. And they will, for the most part, <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll, they'll peop most people will acknowledge that and take that feedback right. appropriately. Um, and then my advice for everybody, so going old regardless school. of um, gender, is... Um, just don't be <laughs> ruled by fear. The problem you see at every level, at the most junior level, but also at the absolute highest level, is people making decisions based on fear. So I would love to know, fear. do you have advice for other Those are women never that the want best to get decisions. into Those are never the things that are going to take industry. you to that breakthrough. And I always say to people, just like imagine the worst thing that can happen That's great and advice. like live that with is it and solid sit there advice. and realize, I could, I could survive that. I'd be yeah. okay. Yeah. And then just don't be scared. Well, I had a gr probably one was my mom. You know, she was she was she was tough and resilient. But my professional mentor is an amazing, amazing woman uh, named Amy Pascal, and she gave me two breaks in my career. She made me a studio executive for the first time when I was in live action, and then she offered me this job running Sony Animation. And she is a badass, and she loves storytelling and storytellers mm -hmm. more than anything and um, and she doesn't care about the rules. Um, she's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Wh who was your mentor or where did you learn to be so fearless? Okay. Oh, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> like, amazing. And, and, you know, I saw a ton. I actually went to my friend's house for, like, real trick-or-treating because my kids are adults and live in New York. Um, yes. And, by the way, by the way, hot Halloween tip that we realized this year, have 
bottles of water. So, uh, Those kids were so with me, thirsty. Right? They had it's been like eating Halloween. sugar and walking for hours. It's that and time we had of water, year, right? And they were like, oh my gosh. And you um, see kids. But seeing dressed little up like Ghostbusters kids and that Miles one Morales kids was a come up was so a great. But to be paper. fair, and those you work with those artists, you saw their vision, us, right? like, got it on the screen, and now Miles this kid, out of everything that they could be, com- they want to be books. one of your stories walking but down the street. But we also see a What's lot of Hotel Transylvania like characters, and those were born in the studio. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> No. Does your friend give out full-size candy bars? Nice. You got good friends. (laughs) Not remotely. (laughs) It's a it's a beautiful thing. Oh, you're great to talk to. Thank you. Yeah. That's so great. This is not a trick question. I'm going someplace with this. But can you draw? Okay, 